Welcome back. Of course, John McDonald from Proscop. We're on PS23 this time, and we're going to be riding from Moss Morn V Octo 2 back into Kokodi on the B925. And again, this time, same as the last video, we're going to be looking at the um, road surface, the camber, the slope, elevation changes, talking about that, and also the limit point, passion point. So, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, we talked quite a lot about the road surface camber slope and elevation on the way out, so let's talk a bit more about the limit point vanishing point this way uh, on the way in. Now here you can see the rider has got an uphill section. Remember we said an uphill section is a limit point vanishing point, you can't use it, but you're going to be restricted by the ability to stop within the distance. You can see it be clear. If your vision is reducing, your speed should be reducing. You should be thinking about the what if. It could be a car broken down over the hill here, cow in the middle of the road, anything, and you need to be able to stop. I like to hear the vision's reducing, and you can see that there, vision being maintained and then opening up. As the vision's reducing, your speed should be reducing. The less forward vision you've got, the slower you should be going. So if I approach a bend, like we said before, and the vision's reducing, and I'm getting very close, like just now, getting quite close, quite close, quite close, before the vision starts to move there, the closer you get, the tighter that bend is. When the vision's going away at the same rate as you're travelling through, like you can see just now, for example, the vision's moving away nicely there, it means we can maintain the speed. And as long as we can stop within the distance, we can see it clear while speed on our side of the road. If the vision's moving away from us quicker, the bend's opening up. If it's safe to do so, we can go a bit quicker. If the vision's coming back, remember, we should be slowing down. We're going to talk a bit more about that in a moment. Now look here, you've got a nice surface. We've had no real surface issues here. The road surface was... Um, uh, relayed quite a, no, just a couple of years ago and it's still pretty pretty decent as you can see. Another blind press so the rider's slowing down in anticipation of the what if. I've got a sign here telling us a left hand bend followed by a right hand bend. Now look how close the rider gets here before this limit point starts to move on this one. There you go, there's it starting to move, there's it matching, there's it shooting away, it's a short sharp bend. There's one stationary, there's it starting to move, There's it, it's almost as soon as it matches it shoots away. These are short sharp bends. Now I use a technique when I go into a corner, if the limit point starts to come back to meet me, I know the bend's tightening up. I use what I call bend one recovery, which is just closing the throttle. I keep the lean angle the same, I close the throttle, the bike engine brakes, it slows down and it tightens towards the apex. Now if I need level two recovery, I use a bit of back brake. Now, in the good old days, uh, police roadcraft used to recommend cadence on the back brake, touching the back brake on and off. I'm not really a total advocate of that, I, I like a light application of the rear brake, I use it a lot in my racing, turning into a tight corner, once I've done the brake and released the brake, I'll maybe use a bit of engine brake and combine with a bit of rear brake to help pull the bike into the corner. So close shot will help tighten the bike into the corner if you're in the right gear, and using a bit of back brake will also pull the bike in. Of course there's a third level where I'll use close shot, a little bit of back brake and I'll also counter steer and tighten the bike up as well. OK, let's get back to limit point, vanishing point, the road surfaces, camber, slope and elevation. We're obviously on a downhill section here just now, riders looking straight across and just straight lining it right across here. Look at the integrity of the surface, nice integrity, consistent colour, you're not seeing any particular issues or problems at all there um, with the surface. There's your bands just to kind of warn you're coming to a built up area here as you're going over you get the vibrations up through the bite the noise and that kind of gives you a bit of an indication as what's happening. Look at the surface here it's breaking up really bad but of course we'd be going quite slow at this point anyway and lots of colour changes. Remember I said where you see colour changes you can have grip level changes that could be for the better or for the worse but whenever I see colour changes right away I'm concerned and uh, the way I work it is until I've made a full assessment I don't commit fully. Now we'll pick this video up at the other side of Octo Tool and we'll continue talking about um, the camber slope, the elevation and the limit point, vanishing point. Again, look at all the colour changes here. If I was riding along this road I'd be picking up all those different colours and textures um, and that would be warning me, especially if I'm going to be braking at those points, leaning or accelerating. Again, extend the vision along here, pretty consistent colour, you can see that. The surface is pretty level, but if you look in the distance um, you can see already the bend curving to the right and look at the elevation change, it's starting to go uphill. Now remember what we said, uphill sections create positive cambers, downhill sections create negative cambers for us. So here's the rider on the right hand bend and we've got a kind of a, as I say, it, it's kind of cambers off there and sucks you towards outside. That's why the walls missed on the left hand side where a lot of cars have gone in there 
braked and then skidded off the road. Now look at this road surface here, look at the change in the colour and the texture. Now my son had an accident right there because the shell sure grip was missing and he touched his throttle, no grip and his back wheel went out on the wet road. Now you'll notice I'm moving over the, the patch work there. I'm happy to do that in the dry but I would not be happy to do that on a wet road over the tar banding. I would tend to keep in the one position. I'm always conscious that if you're rolling straight over a dodgy road surface, not exciting, not braking, just maintaining constant speed, it's not so much of a problem. In fact, if I go over that, I'll loosen the bars and I'll let my bar shake a bit and straighten up. I don't over grip, I'll let the bike find its natural position. But in the wet, I'm particularly wary if I'm leaning or braking and accelerating on those surfaces. Look ahead here, look how the surface is really changing in colour and beginning to break up a bit. You can see, look, see the colour changes, the texture changes, sheer sign that there's a problem there. So that's why I'd be going a little bit slower, a bit more cautious in those areas. <coughs> With the right hand bend there as well as you were coming up the hill, and a lot of people have gone in there far too fast, braked and then run wide. So let's build a little bit on what I was saying there about the vanishing point, limit point. The closer I get to a bend before the limit point begin to move, it's like the bend shouting back at me to slow down. I know it's a tight bend if I'm really close before it moves. If I'm further back and it's already moving, I know it's just a gentle curving bend. So I've been able to effectively determine the severity of a bend just by how quickly that limit point begins to move. If it matches for a long time, I know it's a, I know it's a long bend. If it matches and then starts to move away quickly, I know it's a short, sharp bend. OK, we're uh, keeping into the near side here over the blind crest. We're obviously going downhill. You can see the, the sea in the distance. We're working our way back down to sea level here. It's all downhill. Now, this bend that we're going to be coming up to next after this left hand bend that we've got here, this is a particularly bad bend to the right here because it's a negative camber and it's kind of downhill and a lot of people have gone in there, braked, run and run into the trees and been badly hurt. Hence the shell sure grip that's down there to add that bit additional grip as well. Again, we're still on the downhill section here and you can see where the, the sun's not been getting in, it's created this kind of microclimate where there's still some damp patches on the road. Not so bad because we're going dead straight here, but if you were having to lean or brake on damp patches or loose gra gravel, anything like that, remember, as soon as the integrity of the surface is compromised, you're particularly at danger when you're going to have to brake, if you're going to have to lean, or you're going to have to accelerate. I don't have a problem driving through it straight like this, if I can avoid it, I will, but I'm not going to swerve all over the road to do it. If I can avoid it safely, fine, but if I can't, I will run through it. Just relax, don't accelerate, don't brake, just run through, loosen the grip a little bit, let the bike find its natural way. Yes, it might shake and wobble a little bit, but you'll get through it. That saved my beating once when I came around the corner, loose grit and gravel across the road. I managed to get the bike straightened up, just let it run through it. It wobbled a little bit, but it straightened itself up. If I'd panicked and grabbed the brakes, I'd have been in real difficulty. So there you go, we've talked then about the camber, the slope, the elevation, how to read that, how to build that into your riding plan. We've also talked about colour changes on the surface as well, and we've talked about the limit point, vanishing point, and how to use that and how to build that into your riding plan.